didn't see you there. Oh, this? Just a little trip down memory lane. I was thinking, tomorrow's video is about my stage manager essentials. The tools that I use to, to help me do my job. And I was thinking, I have to get asked Brit. What does a stage manager do? And to answer that question, a lot. But I figured I'd make a video about it, talk to the people about what exactly I do. Granted, it changes company to company. It changes depending on if you're doing a straight play versus a musical versus one act versus a festival of one acts versus a, a dance showcase. There's a, a lot of variables happening, but for a straight play, this is typically how the process goes. As I said, subject to change, but this is what most stage managers go through. I'm going to break this video down into a couple of parts for you. Pre-production, auditions, read through, rehearsals, tech and show, and then closing and strike. So let's crack in. Pre-production, you've been hired by a company to be their stage manager, you know the show you're working on. You're gonna have a couple pre-production meetings. Mine happened over Zoom. You're meeting with the director, the designers, the production manager, the sometimes artistic director, financial director, financial manager. And you're having a meeting and you're discussing, well, you're introducing yourself first of all, you're most of the time meeting these people for the first time. And then you're discussing concepts. You're discussing what the director wants, what the designer wants, what the designer's thinking based on the director's thoughts. You're figuring out how the set's going to be designed, how the lighting's going to be designed, which is what the costumes to look like. Your things like dates and deadlines for when drafts need to be in, when feedback needs to be given, and for when final, final renderings need to be in. That way you can have your TD and whoever else is on the build team start working on pulling stock and figuring out what they need to go purchase. Costumes figures out what they need to build versus what they can borrow. Same thing with props. And what you're doing as the stage manager, what I'm doing as the stage manager, is sitting there and taking notes. I'm jotting all of this stuff down. I'm taking the dates down. I'm taking down any concerns people might have. I'm taking down the director's idea. I'm taking down what the scenic designer thinks, what the lighting designer thinks, what the costume designer thinks. All of this stuff that way, when the meeting ends, I can type it all up because I write all my notes out by hand. I just, I feel I take notes better that way. I type them all up. I send them off to my production manager. And then she, in turn, by the end of the day, sends them out to, to the production team. And that way everyone has a clear, concise list of notes and of what we discussed. So your job, or my job as the stage manager, is to sit there, observe, take these notes. I will ask questions every now and again especially in regards to auditions. This is usually the pre-production meeting. This is when you figure out auditions, how you wanna do auditions, when you wanna do auditions, based on the date of the read-through. The read-through has already been predetermined, so you have a certain amount of time to, to then get your cast and get everyone, get all the contracts signed and everything so that you can start promptly on time and not have to worry about we still haven't cast this person, we gotta get somebody in, we have to have somebody just to talk through it at the read through, all that sort of good stuff. And auditions now are becoming fun sort of hybrids of online and in person. So what my company did was we had auditions over Zoom to start, we had two dates over Zoom and that was fun. <laughs> because all I really had to do was I was logging on with the director and the uh, the artistic director. Sometimes it's just your director, sometimes you'll have both. Sometimes you might have more people, there might be a choreographer. It all depends on what you're auditioning for. And I would, I would ask them if they're ready because I would see who's in the waiting room. And if they were ready, I would go dark, I would um, mute myself and let whoever was in the waiting room in. That was kind of fun because every once in a while you'd get like I was doing a show when I did a wrinkle in time and I was running I was running auditions. A lot of people had was on, were on the parent zooms. So you would have a parent name and you'd kind of hope that the last names matched up or you could figure it out. Uh our snake and lace was fun because some people had were just numbers. So you'd be like, Oh, do we have John Smith? And I said, No, but we have 
one, two, three, seven, eight, five. I said, I don't know who that is. And they go, well, let's find out. So it, it was just a little bit of fun in that. I do like an in-person audition a little bit better. So our callbacks were in person. Sometimes you don't need to do callbacks. Sometimes the initial audition, be it over Zoom or in person, is enough. The director knows what they want. Sometimes you have to go into callbacks. So my callbacks were in person. I actually had to go to my callback after doing Wrinkle. I did my Wrinkle uh, matinee and then drove immediately to the studio to do Arsenic callbacks. And normally you have both your stage manager and your ASM. So how that would work is the stage manager is usually sitting in with the director and whoever else is sitting in on, on the callbacks in their separate room and you have the ASM sitting outside checking people in. Our production manager was also there. Sometimes that's a possibility. You check people in and then the stage manager will come relay to the ASM. This is who we need next. Can you please get them? And then we want to see X, Y, and Z. Can you have them in the waiting room? If there's multiple rooms, can you just ha let them know that they're on deck? Whatever the case may be. That's how Wrinkle went. I was sitting in, a, in our second waiting room. My ASM would come out, tell me who we needed to send in. I would send those people in and then they would also tell me, this is who we want to have up next. I would go out into the other lobby, say, hey, can you guys come in the waiting room? We need you guys next. For Arsenic and Lace, I didn't have my ASM. So I was pulling double duty. I was running from the audition space to the lobby, to the waiting room, saying who I needed, checking in with my production manager to make sure I was like, hey, it's this person here, cool. So I could call their name and not seem like there's not just stand there and call a name that's not there so it's fun stage managers are the kind of people who you know really watch in the waiting room watch how the way that people react and the way that they're interacting I think a lot of people don't understand that the moment you walk into an audition in the waiting room that's when the audition starts so that's my little tip for for actors, that's also my tip, I think, for anybody going in for an interview. Usually they'll have you wait in a waiting area. That's when the interview starts. It starts with how you're presenting yourself and how you're acting before you go in for the audition, before you go into that room to, take that, to have that interview. There's always somebody watching and you never know what they're going to see. So after that's done, after callbacks, we're having a meeting. It's usually the production manager, sometimes the financial manager, the artistic director, the director yourself, your your ASM, sometimes your ASM. It all kind of depends on on who they who gets to sit at the table and who's really needed. You don't sometimes need the ASM. Sometimes you do. Sometimes they're it's like, hey, you know, you report back, you get to go leave. It all it all depends. Sometimes we've got people zooming in. That was a common occurrence for for this past year is we'd have immediately following in person callbacks, we'd have a sit down at a table to have these discussions and somebody would have to be on Zoom for whatever reason. And you're discussing what you saw, who you want to be in the show, availability, um, any major conflicts. Sometimes you don't get the gig because you have a ton of conflicts and a ton of like very important conflicts. Sometimes, you know, it all kind of depends. But this is an opportunity to look at the director's seen all these people act in front of them you as a stage manager get to rely on what you saw when they weren't actively being, like actively in the audition, when they were in the waiting room. You've got your production manager and the stage manager often looking at forms that they've filled out to see about conflicts, to see about anything major that could be a potential conflict, that could be something that's really good for us, really not so good for the company and the show, all sort of depends. So you have those discussions. And then you set the cast and you sometimes the stage manager has to set out the the offer emails uh, i don't believe i had to send out offers but sometimes that that might be your job oftentimes it's the production manager's job they send out the offers over email to all of the actors who you have decided you wanted to cast and then you wait to hear back a confirmation and once you hear back that confirmation, the stage manager gets to send out the welcome email and have any and all attached paperwork as far as actor expectations, scripts, tech sched uh, schedules, 
anything that an actor might need, anything an actor might need to know about this company and how the company handles, like, like how the company operates. Uh, some of them have social media expectations where you, if you're going to post about the show, you have to go to their social media manager and, and say, this is what I want to post, this is how I want to post it, this is where I want to post it, and they'll tell you yes, no, add a hashtag, whatever. So all of that pertinent information gets to go out to them. And then you have the read-through. And the read-through is the first time the script is usually read aloud by everybody. The stage manager gets to go in depending, you know, half hour, hour early. I went extra early for arsenic because that was the only time we could tape out the set. Oftentimes before read through, you and your ASM want to go in and tape the set out, which what that involves is looking at the ground plan or the rendering that the scenic designer has for you, going into the studio space and either measuring it out to its exact measurement because you have the space, or in my case, my rehearsal space was significantly smaller than the than the performance space, so you kind of have to fudge some numbers in order to get the general idea of, for arsenic, where the staircase was, where the window seat was, where the door was, where the cellar door was. So that usually happens before the read-through, either a couple of days before or a couple hours before it all depends on the availability of your space we were working with another show for arsenic so the only time that we could do it was right before the read through so after the set gets taped out you're as the stage manager setting up chairs and tables disinfecting everything you're making copies of everything making copies of everything that you've already sent out that you've already sent out in an email and you're giving them cop uh, you're giving them things to be signed, such as photo release forms, emergency contact forms, things that you need to have as an SM, A, in case of emergency, like emergency contacts, and then the photo release to have permission to post their photos on all relative uh, social medias to promote the show. So always important to have those and to have that paperwork. I was also checking vaccine cards. That is something that I think company to company is depending on each company, but my company checking vaccines, making sure everybody was good and up to date and following our COVID-19 policy. Everyone's gonna have a different policy. So just be careful of that. And then the read through, everyone comes in, you're making introductions, you're usually introducing people to designers, whether on Zoom or on, or in person, they'll discuss, like the scenic designer especially will discuss the set. Usually actors might have questions already. They'll ask a couple questions. You as the stage manager, myself as the stage manager, and my ASM, uh, my company likes us to take pictures of, process, of the process so that we have stuff to post on social media. So I'm taking pictures of everyone at the read through. My ASM's doing that and I'm filling out my rehearsal report, the first rehearsal report, which is a document that has everything that you could possibly need on it. Date, time, production, director, stage manager, any personnel from the company that's there, attendance, who's there as an actor, who's there from staff, what you plan to do that day and what you plan to accomplish and what you actually accomplish, when you take breaks, how long are the breaks, and then of course all of the information uh, is broken down into general, scenic, props, costume, lighting, dialect, you have a dialect coach, the theater that we're working at, management. So this is a form that gets filled out. If the, somebody has a question about the set, you put that in scenic. How big are the stairs? How tall is the staircase? Props. When are we getting the dead bodies for our sake? Uh, ETA on the bodies. And you ask these questions and then every night I send them out to my production staff and then wait for wait to get the answer back. I also, the company I work for use Google Drive, so not only did they get emailed to everyone, they got dropped into a, a folder on Google Drive, so they were always ready. This is a really important tool because you need to know, one, who's there, who's on time, who is late, if there are any injuries, when you started, when you ended, to make sure you are following 
like you're, we're, we're, we're going from 6.30 to 10 to make sure that you're in those time frames, that you're not abusing any power, that you're not squandering any time or you're not, you know, you're, you're following this set time that we, that you have said is going to happen, making sure you take appropriate breaks. Uh, even though I was working for non-equity company, we still took standard equity breaks, which is five minutes for every 55 minutes or to every hour, most people round up and then 10 minutes for every like 90 minutes. So I think it's like 125, an hour and 25 and you take your 10. So making sure you're taking appropriate breaks, everyone's being treated with respect. And then of course, all of the information that you need to know because as a stage manager, because if directors asked you and actors asked you, or you just need to know. A big part about the stage manager's job is to communicate effectively between the director, the actors, and the scenic and set designers, which is why I love that I have a background in technical theater because I understand a lot about what my designers are talking about and have had a lot of practice in, in boiling that information down into this is what my actors need to know, this is what my director needs to know. So that's a big part of my job. And that's a big part of the whole rehearsal process. So you have the read through, everything goes well. Then you start the rehearsal process. Stage management should get there anywhere between half an hour to an hour before rehearsal starts. That all kind of depends on how much you need to set up, all this sort of stuff. I'm always there extra early because I'm worried about traffic. And what I, what, what I do is I go in and if I'm an ASM, I'm usually in charge of props. I'm setting up props where they need to be, seeing what we got in, seeing what we still need what we have is a rehearsal prop, what's the real prop. I'm checking out all of that stuff, making sure everything on the set's looking good, if I need to vacuum. If we're starting, say, in the middle of a, in the middle of the play and it's a scene, like in Wrinkle in Time, we had all of these different sets. So setting up what we needed for camisots or what we needed for the happy medium. Arsenic was a little bit easier because it was a, the set didn't change. You were always in the, the living room of the Brewster house. So setting all of that up, I usually get my paperwork set up at that point. I type in everything I need into the rehearsal report, get an email prepped for later that night, printing out any information that I might need to give to the actors. And then it's just a matter of everyone's coming in, making sure everyone's on time. If they're not there, calling them to see where they're at. There are a couple people uh, because I know how traffic is and I know you get into a routine of, oh, traffic might have hit and this guy's going to be five minutes late or you might be in, they're never late, why aren't they here? So it all kind of depends. You can start having a little bit of lenience with the with your actors depending on, depending on both your relationship with the actors and the director and as well as knowing their, their kind of schedule, where they're coming from and what kind of traffic they might be hitting. So, but... Uh, point blank, if it's 6.30 and your actor isn't there and you call them and they're like, I'm walking in now, well, you're not in the room, I don't know where you're at. Never feel bad about that. That took me a little bit of time to get used to of, it is my job to see where you're at. I am, this is, I'm within my right as a stage manager to call you at, at the call time to see where you're at because you are not in the room, even if you're just walking in, so. I've done that before. I've called people and they're walking in the door, answering the phone. They're like, hello. And I'm like, never mind. Thank you. Click. Um, and then so you start rehearsal. You're taking out blocking notes. You're writing stuff in the rehearsal report. You're sometimes filling in for an actor. You're going on stage and being a body <laughs> or you're sitting down and being a voice. All depends on what's needed that day. I was also the fight choreographer for Arsenic and Lace because we had a couple of scenes of simulated violence. So before, like before we'd run, I would have a 10 minute fight call, make sure everything felt good. Or if we were just doing a bunch of scenes and my director said, okay, let's do the Elaine thing. I would be like, hey, can I do my fight call? Absolutely, thank you. Okay, guys, we're gonna go from here. We'll run it, pending anything horrible happening. We'll do it once, make sure everybody feels good, maybe twice, get that in your bodies. So. Yeah, my job is really to make the actors feel safe and know that they're safe, so. And to make sure that they feel secure in their rehearsal process and any worries they might have, you know, will get taken care of. And that's especially kind of difficult when you're going from this very small 
rehearsal space into a bigger theater. Sometimes it's hard for actors to understand just how everything's going to work. So just reassuring them and making sure everything's good, taking down that blocking, and any notes for the director. Uh, might have anything that the director might need to ask, any concerns that you might have as a stage manager of scene changes, of where props need to go, of entrances. So that's what the rehearsal process looks like. That's a day-to-day, -day, everything's pretty much the same. You get into tech week, you'll have done like a paper tech, which is you and your designers, sometimes over Zoom, just sitting there, going through. You'll They'll have given you cue sheets, you'll mark each cue in your prompt book, and going through and making sure everything is where it needs to be. If they have questions, you'll go and ask the director. Hopefully you're having rehearsal later that day. So in rehearsal, you'll, you'll make sure to get that taken care of. You do a cue to cue when you start tech, which is the first time you're in the building, usually. I had to give my actors a tour of the building and of the set. And then after that, we started our cue to cue, which is where you just go cue to cue of, for, through everything for lights, for sound, for projections, if you have projections, just making sure everything looks the way the director wants it to look, everything looks the way the designers want it to look. If you need to change something on a fade or change something on the, for a sound cue, that that's where this happens. From my cue to cue, what ended up happening is we ended up having a significantly less cues than we had at the cue to cue. We were cutting a lot of lighting cues and a lot of the sound cues ended up being practical because we had a real knocker for the door. We had a real doorbell. My ASM was backstage cradling a generator, cranking it for the phone to ring. So all I had to do was like, like cue the ASM, but it wasn't like I had to cue the, the soundboard op. And then, so that's a cue to cue. And then usually the following day you're in costumes for the first time you'll be in mics, you'll do, and you'll really start getting into the, the routine of coming in. As a stage manager, you make sure the set is clean, if it's, it needs to be vacuumed, if it needs to be swept. I had a set of stairs that a lot of actors ran up and down up on, so I was running up and down the stairs and jumping on them to make sure they still felt sturdy and safe. I was opening and shutting our window a couple of times and the window seat for arsenic. I was opening all the doors, make sure everything was safe and secure and feeling good. Your actors show up, cool, make sure everyone's there. They'll get into mics and costumes, come out, you'll do a mic check. We'll do, which will, the, the stage manager will run, and then you'll do your fight call. While all of this is happening, your ASM is setting up props, is setting up any scene changes, anything that they need to have happen backstage to help the, to make sure the show runs smoothly checking props checking checking things of set pieces i always had to check for a wrinkle in time wheels on several pieces that we had to wheel out to make sure everything was good um my asm for arsenic had to make sure a lot of bottles were filled with liquid so it looked like there was wine and whiskey and things and my asm also had to be in charge of some prop weapons that had to be locked away and only taken out right before the scene happened so making sure that those are safe and secure and everything's good. Meanwhile, I, as a stage manager, I'm running sound check, making sure everybody's um, prompting the actors to speak when our when our sound uh, soundboard op is ready, and then doing a fight call, making sure everything feels good in these costumes, especially if it's the first couple times we're doing it in costumes, making sure everything feels still feels safe and secure, and everyone feels okay. And then the actors get to go away. They get to go do whatever they need to do. Your, AS your ASM is finishing up and, and I'll go up to my booth and I'll sit and I'll wait to call the show. I shouldn't say I'll wait. I'll be in communication with the house to make sure that everything's still good to open on time, which is usually half an hour before the show starts. Checking with things like, are we having a curtain speech? Is there a talk back? What do I need to cue my, my board ops on because of these things? And having my performance report open, uh, paperwork doesn't stop because you're in tech uh, or because you're in a performance. You have to fill out performance reports to make sure that, to see how the audience responded. What was house count? Did you start on time? Did you end on time? If we didn't, why didn't that happen? Or if there's anything that happened with set. Like the door kept getting off of its hinges. We were just, everyone was kind of just going ham on, on the front door. And we'd have to put that into the report. And usually 
because I have a lot of experience with tools and with building. I was going to, I went up the next day and would to fix the door. I had to fix the door jam and I had to fix one of the hinges uh, that just kept getting stripped. Uh, we've had two pants rips. One of them was on the leg, which was great. And that got fixed up intact by our costume designer, but one guy ripped a pant, his pants in the crotch at intermission and that intermission he told my ASM and I came down because the door, we were having problems with the door again. And she goes, do you, can you, can you hand sew? I said, yes, but we have like two minutes. I need to be in the booth. Y'all need to be set. I can't do it now. So I came in the next day and, and sewed up uh, his pants and made sure everything was good. They held for the rest of the show, very proud of that. So that goes in the report, just so when the costume designer comes to get the costumes and there's, um, and there's, oh, this is a new seam and maybe it's shoddy, maybe it's not. Why, why was I informed about this? You can never communicate too much as a stage manager. I always feel it's better to over communicate than to under communicate, ask questions, make sure it's okay. My, my TD was super cool with, he goes, if you know how to fix it, fix it. I mean, make sure it goes in the report, but if you know how to fix it, go ahead and do it. I trust you guys. Costume design was pretty cool with that too. It's like, if there's a major problem and you know how to fix it, unless it's something like, oh my God, the whole shirt got ripped off and it's in pieces, go ahead and fix it. Just mark it in the report. And that's how tech and that's how a show week goes. You're, you get in that nice routine, you get in, you chat with the actors a little bit, they go get their costumes on, they get their mics on, you do your mic check, your, your fight call, you have a little rapport with them, they go off, check with your, your ASM, hey, how's everything going backstage, everything looks good, cool, I'm going up to the booth, we're on calm, we're having a good time, we're calling the show, and everything's going well, and then strike slash post-show is... For me, we had to put up legs, which are just curtains for masking. So um, some of them belong to the theater we were working at, some of them belong to us. Going up and taking those down, making sure props got returned to props, making sure all the costume pieces were accounted for and brought where they needed to be. Uh, I had to hand out checks, which was a fun experience uh, to the actors. I actually learned a lot handing out checks, so can't wait to use that information on my net, like those skills on the next show. Uh, as the stage management team, we take down any signage that we have posted in the theater, because when we came in for tech, you you put up signage. I forgot to mention that you put up signage of dressing room and who's in it, other dressing room, where the bathroom is, where is stage left, stage right, the green room call sheets you try to make it as easy as possible we were still being masked backstage so uh each side of the sta stage actually had um boards with like drills in it like drills in it with screws in it so you can hang things and we put people's names underneath them so they can hang their masks there so going around and taking all of that stuff down taking spike tape up making excuse me making sure the the dressing rooms are clean and accounted for that's where i learned my big lesson when giving out checks is you should always check the dressing rooms before you give people checks because i was taking up several pieces of costume that were not properly taken up to where i told the actors they needed to be um just generally making sure everything is clean and, and was the way that you found it when you came in a week two week three weeks a month ago however long your show runs i'm making sure the booth is clean and trash is taken out we're making sure the uh, green room's all clean or at least just all the costumes are in here cool let's take care of whatever we need to get out of the, the green room and we do a check out with the with the staff of the theater and then so say that's a sunday matinee and we we close we strike our stuff uh that saturday was our post-mortem which is a discussion that you have at the end of the show you ever you kind of give everyone time to breathe which is really nice and over zoom we had a post-mortem which is a nice way you kind of see everyone again it's funny because you've been for all of this time you've you've been in these weekly meetings and you're seeing them daily in tech and and then you go a week without seeing them and you come back and you're like oh I like I missed you guys and you discuss things like what went right what went wrong what can we do better uh an example of that I know as a stage manager I said hey it would be really nice if we like if there was a way I just we were told things very last minute uh, it's not that the actors didn't realize these things were problems, like say a cable was falling down and we needed to gaff that up or 
somebody split their pants and we're finding out two days after it happened instead of the day that it happened so we were coming up with ideas on how to make that a a more efficient process of the actors going down to the dressing rooms and maybe having a form to fill out so that stage management can look at the form and and fill something out instead of having to worry about if an actor thought they told somebody or did and you're busy doing something else that's a little bit more important at that time like that um i mean nothing major happened in arsenic nothing super major happened in wrinkles so there was never these like nobody had like a meltdown but that's where the post-mortem it's a discuss it's a time to have a discussion of this went right this went wrong in the future can we think about doing this in the x y and z and then you're done yeah so that's in a nutshell what a stage manager does to do a straight play um when i do a musical again i will hopefully get to do one of these about a musical uh, when I, I'm going to have an HED position later this, this summer, so hopefully I'll do a video of what an assistant technical director does. But right now, if somebody tells you they're a stage manager, you don't have to remember everything. But geez, remember that it's a lot of work and that they're, they're pretty important people. I always think the best stage man, like stage management is one of those positions where I think a lot of people jokingly say that you can be God, like you even have a God mic, which is a mic that can talk to the backstage area but stage managers are usually some of the most humble and trustworthy and just caring people I've ever met so yeah that's what I that's what I do on a show um I won't I, this is a long video I won't prolong the outro but so stay tuned tomorrow for the video of my essentials when I stage manage and the tools that help me do all of these wonderful things uh if you have any questions you know shoot me a, shoot, put, put them down in the comments you know i almost said shoot me an email uh pop them down in the comments i'll maybe i'll do like a stage manager q a or something i'd love to do that i love what i do so i'm always like geeking out and always like talking to people about it so yeah uh thank you guys for watching and i will see you all tomorrow